So we will be talking today about summation notation. So I have here an example of a summation notation. We have here the summation of x as x goes from 1 to 5. Now I'll be talking about the different parts of a summation notation before we are going to evaluate this kind of summation notation. So as you can see, we have here your Greek symbol. Your Greek symbol is your sigma. This is known to be getting the total of the different uh, functions as prescribed in your summation notation. You have to remember that your summation notation is also known as your sigma notation. Now we have its parts. So we have your x here. Your x here is known to be your term, the expression that will be evaluated or simplified. This is also known to be a function. Then we have x equals 1. Your x equals 1 is known to be your lower limit. When we talk about lower limit, this is the the number where you're supposed to start or this is the beginning this is the initial term then we have your upper limit your upper limit is your five in this given example your upper limit would indicate the last term where we you are supposed to end okay now if you are going to read this example this is read as the summation of x as x goes from 1 to 5 meaning to say you are going to find the sum of x it would initially start from 1 to 5 now let us evaluate to evaluate this sigma notation or summation notation remember that our expression here is x and your lower limit is 1 so we are going to start from 1 then we will end using 5 okay so we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 that's the meaning of the summation notation once evaluated now we are going to add 1 plus 3 is equal to 1 plus 2 I should say is 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 4 is 10 plus 5 is equal to 15. This is now the evaluated form of this summation notation. The summation notation of x as x goes from 1 to 5 equals 15. This is the result. Okay, let's have another example. Let's say the summation of 2x as x goes from 3 to 5. So if we will simplify this, what is our lower limit? Okay, that's correct. Your lower limit is x equals 3. How about your upper limit? Yes, correct. That's 5. Then our expression is equal to 2x. Remember, we have here a constant, but no worry. You're simply going to copy your constant. Then what you're going to do is simply replace your x. You simply have to substitute your lower limit until you reach your upper limit. So let us evaluate. So we have 2 times your lower limit is 3. That's correct. So we have 2 times 3 plus what's next? We have 2 times 4 plus 2 times 5. Do we still have to continue? No more. We are going to end at 5. So basically, we are going to end at 5. Now, let us simplify. So get the, the products of our different terms. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 2 times 4 is equal to 8 plus 2 times 5 is equal to 10. Now, let us simplify. So we have 6 plus 8 is 14 plus 10 is equal to 24. This is now the answer. Now let's have one more example. Let's say we have the summation of x squared minus 1. As x goes from, let's say, 2 to 4. So here, our lower limit is 2. Our upper limit is equal to 4. So now, let us evaluate. 
to evaluate this, we simply have to copy your given function or the term that is prescribed in this summation notation. So now, we have to start at your lower limit, 2 squared minus 1 plus we have what's next after 2 we have 3 squared minus 1 then plus our upper limit is equal to 4 so we have 4 squared minus 1 so now let us simplify we have 4 minus 1 2 squared is 4 minus 1 plus we have 3 squared is 9 because 3 times 3 is 9 minus 1 plus 4 squared is 16 minus 1 then we have now 4 minus 1 is 3 plus 9 minus 1 is 8 plus 15 I 16 I should say 16 minus 1 is 15 so now let us add get the sum so we have 3 plus 8 is 11 plus 15 is equal to 26 so that's it that's how summation notation works thank you